guys, Amy Alton here. I'm an advanced registered nurse practitioner and I'm also known as Nurse Amy and I am a co-founder of Doom and Bloom and also a co-author of the Survival Medicine Handbook. Uh, this is an option if you are considering purchasing the first aid kit car grab and go. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I just wanted to show you, I do have a spiral book available. It's in color. Uh, it do not, does not come with the tabs. Uh, that's for our handy dandy reference. Um, but it is full of wonderful color pictures. Just wanted to show you that real quick. First thing that's really important to us is first aid education. So of course you have the option of the book. You can also add a first aid book um, on antibiotics and how to tell if you should use one antibiotic or another depending on what your illness is and the book helps you decide what you're dealing with so you can appropriately pick the antibiotic. Uh, we have a first aid little booklet here. Um, this tells, you know, burns and sprains and strains and you know just a real quick reference guide and I think that's really important in all of my smaller kits because you probably aren't going to be carrying our big book around at that point you know something that's hiking again this kit is great for um, hiking if you've got a backpack camping it's great for cars RVs boats uh, this really is good even if you just need a, a smaller kit because you don't have a lot of room where you live a, an apartment or a house without a lot of closet space to put things away. So uh, this is just a really good smaller size kit, but it comes with a lot of stuff and we're gonna go over that today. So it comes with this booklet, quick reference. It also comes with um, picture instructions on how to stop bleeding. So I've put this on waterproof paper and depending on what tourniquet you get, the standard uh, SWAT tourniquet or upgrading to a cat tourniquet. You can pick orange or black, and this does come in the, the plastic, although these are not sterile. Um, I would recommend practicing with these. You can also uh, pick a soft T tourniquet. So anyway, these are the waterproof instructions. It goes through the steps, what to do if you're bleeding, if the bleeding continues, what you move on to. In the back, it has a second page, again, packing the wound, um, covering the wound, and everything you need to do, including to the bottom, which is when you call 911, if you're alone. Now, if you're in a group and somebody gets hurt, you tell somebody, if it's available, you call 911, just like CPR. You designate somebody, and that's their job. If they refuse, try to point to somebody else, but your job is immediately going to the bleeding because if you mess around with being on the phone, calling 911, you're giving them all the details, there's blood coming out of the patient, okay? There's not an unlimited amount. When you get to a certain amount of blood loss, the organs fail, that's it, they're gone. So your actions are to stop the bleeding first, not to be on the phone with addresses and names and dates and what happened and this happened and by the time you finish that, you look at the patient like, um, never mind. So anyway, get to it first. And so you have these nice quick instructions. They're gonna be located right on top of the hemostatic gauze or um, powder that you have and on top of the Israeli bandage. So it's really easy. I'll show you what the kit looks like. In fact, I'd like to pack this for you. So we'll go ahead and fold this up how I normally fold it up, which is to show the particular tourniquet. So when it's pulled out, you know that you've got the right instructions for your tourniquet. And this one happens to be for the cat tourniquets, but there is one for the SWAT tourniquet. This is the standard tourniquet that comes with it. This is a, a stretchy tourniquet. Think of it as almost, if you've ever seen a elastic band for exercising, it's very stretchy. It's called a SWAT because it's stretch, wrap, and tuck. So the instructions are actually printed boldly on this amazing tourniquet. Check out my video on SWAT tourniquets. I show you how to use them, how to properly use them. I also have a video on principles of tourniquet use. That's another great video to look at. Uh, what you need to know before you put on a tourniquet. Uh, there are just some principles that everyone needs to know and that's a really good video. So at least look at those two videos. 
And if you're deciding between them, go ahead and look at the cat tourniquet video so you can see, you know, maybe you want that one. Uh, your choices of hemostatic are the standard c -locks. This is a granule packet. This comes in the kit and you can upgrade, however, to a combat gauze. A lot of people are familiar with this. It's also called quick clot. And this is um, 12 feet, it says four yards, but it's 12 feet, obviously. So it's a nice long, it um, looks pretty much like a woven gauze. It's very interesting, um, but known to stop severe hemorrhaging. This is a common use in police packs and military. Um, this is a little less known, but I actually really, really love this. And I do have a video on Kydosam. It's um, very thick, very soft, almost like a padded material, but the entire material is all kytosam. They wove it into material. So it's not embedded in something, it actually is. You can also tear it. I've used it for small wounds. Uh, I can put this back in a Ziploc, or even if you really wanna be fancy, you can do a vacuum pack. Wanna keep humidity away from it. It does react to the blood. So you want to keep humidity away from it, uh, but you can use portions of that. And uh, this one is six feet, but really love this. Again, you have your choice to upgrade to one of these if you like. But it does come with the sea locks. And it's really bandaged. These really bandages are also known as the emergency bandage. These are a sterile pad. It has a stretchy band. It's like an ace wrap, it's, it's very stretchy and you wrap it all around. You put this on after you've packed the wound, you may have put a tourniquet on. This is giving it extra pressure. So when you're stopping the bleeding, when you stop and the bleeding has ceased and everything's been appropriately put on, basic following your steps and you're done, this will maintain pressure. What that's doing is to prevent the re-bleeding, and that's really important. You want to immobilize the, wo the wound and whichever extremity it happened in, and that way it doesn't start re-bleeding. But this is a very important part of that. It does come with the six inch, which is the larger size. When a patient has an injury, you want to cover them up. You want to prevent shock. So we do include a mylar blanket, but this has other uses too. Uh, people have made tents out of these. They've kept warm when it's you know cold. Maybe you get some hypothermia and you need to put a blanket over somebody and you just don't have a wool blanket, but you can throw these in your glove compartment or again, have them in your kit. So we do include one of those. Uh, there's something really interesting that I put in this kit. It's called cayenne pepper. And cayenne pepper, above 30,000 Scoville units, which is how they measure pepper, uh, has been shown to stop mild to moderate bleeding. It's not going to stop that appendage that's been cut off and blood's just pouring out or some really deep wound or you know a blowout of a gunshot wound. So this is not for that. This is for your milder ones because you probably want to save your sea locks or your quick clot or your Kytosan products for that major wound, but this might help those minor wounds. All of the hemostatic gauzes or this powder need to be put on for three minutes. So once you pack those on, you need to put pressure and that gives it time to act. So at least three minutes for those pressure. So those are some bleeding things. I also give um, just a, a nice thick non-sterile ABD pad, just a quick thing you can grab. First thing you want to do when someone's bleeding is get some gauze on there, something between your hand. If you don't have my kit and you want to stop bleeding, any kind of material, a t-shirt, a sock, a, a paper towels, I don't care, any kind of material, a rag, something to put between your hand. It just gives that little extra pressure and push towards the heart because that's where the bleeding is coming from. Blood flows away from the heart. So push towards the heart as hard as you can. It's possible that pressure will stop the bleeding and that would be wonderful. So this is really easy to access. We may have some orthopedic injuries. So we put in an ACE bandage with the little um, clips there. You have a triangular bandage. Remember I was talking about immobilizing a wound. If you have to put a tourniquet on, you've got a wound, you don't want it to move, the triangular bandage would help do that. Also, if you have sprains, strains, you know, shoulder that's out of place, 
something that you need to immobilize. You can also use this to um, MacGyver a splint for a leg in combination, which is wonderful with the SWAT tourniquet, which is stretchy. Between the two of these, you can pretty much wrap the whole leg and immobilize even a leg that has you know, some kind of in injury, even if it's not broken. If you have hot spots, if you're hiking and you're moving around, and your shoes are maybe not broken in or you don't have enough, you know, two pairs of socks in them and some powder. We have mole skin. So this is great for helping to prevent blisters. If you get one, you're going to want to put some extra padding. You can even use um, an iPad is a great shape for padding. You can do the iPad, uh, put a little mole skin over it, maybe one of the larger band-aids or some tape on it to secure it and you really, anytime you can prevent injuries, especially blisters, you're going to be much better off, especially if you're, if you're hiking around a little bit. So you do have mole skin. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the gauze since I picked these up. Uh, you have a couple of iPads. Of course, they're not iPads. They're to protect the eye, but you can use them for gauze padding also. They are sterile. We have non-adherent. When you have burns, when the wound is starting to heal, it's going to try to attach to anything that's woven above it. It's just, you know, a matrix of skin that's growing. This has a shiny part inside it, a shiny side, and that's what you want to put towards the wound. These are sterile, so you have non-adherent. You have uh, two packs of four by fours. So you have five packs of these. And there are, are two in here. So you have a lot of sterile gauze for wounds. We also have a roller gauze. In the instructions, you'll see a section where it says to pack the wound with roller gauze before you put on the emergency bandage. So you have a six inch. This is great wrapping legs, wrapping arms, covering a wound. You don't have to use the whole thing. You can use a portion of it and take a little piece of tape, tape that on, Save yourself some, some gauze and using too, many, too much of the uh, tape. Just a little piece will hold that on. We also have some bigger gauze. These are five by nines. These are uh, really thick. So they give a nice large covering. If you have a bigger wound, you know, on the abdomen or on the leg, you need to, to really cover it up. You can put this on, cover it with some roller gauze. You can even use loosely some ace wrap to hold on gauze. Any of these gauzes, if it's on uh, an extremity, that works really well. So multi-use for a lot of these things. Um, even a triangular bandage will hold any of these gauzes on. Just wrap it around again. Little piece of tape holds it on. We do have, speaking of tape, we have adhesive tape, uh, but we also have duct tape. Um, I can't speak enough about duct tape. I grew up, my father, Sorry, hit the microphone. My father uh, was an airline mechanic, and we basically had two things in our house to fix everything, and it was super glue and duct tape. So this is what I grew up with. And um, I do, again, include super glue. When we talk about uh, wound closure, you want to use the least invasive. If you can hold your edges together after you've cleaned your wound, you can put a little layer of super glue. This is on top. This is not going inside the wound. You're holding the edges together and sealing them on top, not inside. Put a layer, let it dry. Put a second layer, let it dry. Put a third layer, let it dry. Don't put any bacitracin products or anything like Vaseline on it because that will dissolve the super glue and you've lost the whole sense of protection by dissolving the super glue. So least invasive, also uh, steri strips, least invasive. These are great for, again, pulling a wound that may be slightly apart, that it doesn't just sit together nicely to put super glue on, but you know, pulls the edges together. And then you get a nice healing. And that's the whole point of this. Prevent infection, heal fastest. What do you do when you get a wound? Stop bleeding, clean it. Make sure you're cleaning it. So let's talk about, um, oh, I do want to mention, I do have a suture in here. It is illegal to practice medicine without a license. Do not go suturing everyone just because you can. Um, you need to do this at the end of the world when there are, there's no one to find you and prosecute you because <laughs> it is illegal. Um, 
Moving from the suture, let's go ahead and talk about the instrument since you say, well, what would I hold the suture with? Uh, I have a curved clamp. Curved clamps, great. Uh, they can remove objects, fish hooks. They can uh, clamp a blood vessel. If you have a bleeder and you can see where the bleedings come from, you can get a hold of it and get that clamp in there. You can stop the bleeding. That would be a wonderful thing. Uh, Multi-use for clamps. I have iris scissors. Uh, you can cut tape. You can cut sutures. You can cut the steri strips. You can cut your moleskin. Uh, lots of use. You can cut hangnails that are bothering you. Tweezers to remove debris. Again, when we talk about cleaning the wound, it's not just flushing it really hard, but you may need to pick out debris. I do have a bandage scissor in here. I know a lot of people use EMT scissors. Um, I kind of prefer these because they have a screw. You can tighten these and you can also sharpen them. So you can get a lot of use out of bandage scissors versus EMT scissors, which may not have the screw that you can tighten. So I do really prefer those. I do put a pen light in here to check somebody's pupils, see if they're reacting. Uh, this does have a, a little uh, guide on it and if you're pin light doesn't work it's because there's a piece of plastic in there that protects the batteries so that you're not wasting them so if you go to use the pin light make sure you open it I may have the batteries reversed sometimes I do that or um, I think these particular ones come with a little piece of plastic that protect it from going off and wasting your batteries we have a thermometer with instructions it is electric you can't get mercury Unfortunately, you can't get mercury thermometers, at least not in this country anymore. Um, I put a scalpel in here. If you have an abscess or something you need to cut open to look into it to, to get more things out, uh, you never know what a, a scalpel is good for. So it's, I think it's always handy to have something sharp. I have a glow stick in here. It's a 12 hour, six inch green glow stick. If you need to signal people, uh, a snowstorm or it's at night and you've called help and you really don't have any other lighting this is great um, so you can get some help uh, it of course comes with gloves several gloves I think I have 10 in here we have hand sanitizer so use the hand sanitizer then use the gloves before you do wound care before um, if you can before you stop the bleeding if it's, if it's really bad and you just don't have time you're not going to get any diseases from somebody if you're stopping bleeding with your bare hands, just so you know this. Uh, you would have to have some major cuts and it would really have to be like blood to blood transfer and only certain things would even be able to transfer that way. So you're probably safe, but your gloves are not necessarily for your protection. Honestly, they're for the patient. So just understand that you're putting gloves on you may say, oh, I don't care if my hands get dirty or whatnot. It's, that's not what it's about. It's about keeping the wound from getting infected. And when you wear clean gloves, you're helping to prevent infection. That is, again, the whole goal of helping people with injuries is that they heal the best, they heal the fastest, and they heal without um, complications. Uh, going back to some orthopedic things, I also do have um, a instant ice pack. It's a five by six and it's folded up. You'll see a lot of these things in bags. I bag everything and what you're seeing here is not completely bagged up. I'm going to see if I can pack this bag rather fast and just show you how I do it. I also have a, a bunch of big band-aids. They're I think three by fours and a bunch of a one by three. So lots of band-aids for the, the simple things in life that hopefully most things are. Um, a couple of masks. I have been putting masks in my kits since I started, which was 2010, I believe, I built my first kit. This has nothing to do with COVID. This has to do with you breathing into a wound or if you're sick, you getting the other person sick. So uh, you have two of these and, um, you know, use them if you want to protect someone else. It's, it's not a bad idea. Don't just think it's a, a COVID thing, it's not. CPR mask, nowadays they're not really teaching to do mouth to mouth. If you've been trained, you're a medical professional, this is what you wanna do. I do have a mouth barrier for CPR. Let's talk about antiseptics. I did show you the bacitracin. Um, this is a, I 
think at least an ounce. If I don't have the ounce ones, I give you a whole bunch of single packets. So you, you get a lot of them. Uh, in this bag here, we have BZK, again, more antiseptics. Can never have enough antiseptics. We have Sting Relief. You get bitten. Ah, you're scratching and scratching. Sting Relief, it help you out. A few of those. We have some ammonia towelettes. If somebody is passed out in front of you, fainted, you see that they, you know, were not drunk or on drugs, or you know, you, you see that it was probably from low blood sugar or uh, low uh, blood pressure, this is something that will help wake them up. It smells horrible. Don't use it unless you have to, but what you do is you just open it up and you kind of wave it under their nose. You don't have to make them inhale it for like five minutes or something, just a real quick, and usually they, and they wake up. So it is something I do include in case you find that. Insect repellent, again, preventing the bites, insect repellent, anytime we can prevent. I include honey. I think honey is actually better than bacitracin. So we do include this. Uh, you can use it on cuts and burns. It helps heal. If someone does have that low blood sugar, uh, this would help to raise their blood sugar safely. We have, this is our oh, oral, oral gel, or, or a gel, basically. Uh, pain relief for aches and pains in the teeth. I have some hydrocortisone cream, a good anti-itch rashes, things to reduce uh, rash and redness. Burn gel. This is great to go underneath your non-stick gauze. Burn gel helps to heal and also helps to take away the pain of burns, which can be pretty bad. More antiseptics, we have alcohol and we have betadine. So, that is all. Let me show you the bag real quick. I don't think I really have time to pack this up. However, I will show you a picture. I can be showing you that picture right now while I'm opening this. See the picture of how organized it is. <laughs> so when you see the picture, you'll see that everything has a pocket, the Israeli bandages here with the tourniquet on it, whichever one you picked, and the instructions, and that little sea locks or your upgraded. Hi to Sam or Quick Clot will be there also. The CPR booklet will be over on this side. You'll have your tape on here, your roller gauze. I mean, I'm showing you the picture, so you'll see this. But this is a great bag. It's, zip, it's really heavy duty. The zippers, I don't think if I even tried, I could break them. They are absolutely amazing. It does have a handle here, and if you had some straps, you could actually hook straps up here and carry this bag if you wanted to. But it's lightweight, it's small enough. Again, you can throw it in a car, throw it under a seat, throw it in your camper, even a boat at home. Uh, it, it's very narrow when it's packed. Feels a little fluffier, obviously, but it's, it's probably like that. It's not bad. Appreciate you sticking with me. Oh, I do want to mention, if you buy a book, we will give you a little gift. It may not be this one, but this is just one of our gifts that we had special made. Uh, the tags that are on the side of the book, um, also color tags, you can write notes. You have a pen that says Doom and Bloom on it. And so you have a little notepad, if you'd like. And most of this is in bags, if not everything organized, easy to access, again, in the first aid kit, car, grab and go. I appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, I think you have to hit some kind of bell to get notifications for new videos, but we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, bye.